Welcome to Electron Online and our second video on the life cycle of low mass stars involves the HR diagram and globular clusters. Now globular clusters are clusters of stars that are, are enormously dense and that seem to exist throughout many of the galaxies around us, including our own. Our own galaxy has about 150 of these globular clusters spread throughout the disk and the halo of the galaxy. These globular clusters are absolutely enormous. They are anywhere from, uh, well, how big are they? All right, they're like anywhere from 60 to 100 light years across, and they contain as many as 100,000 to over a million stars, all clustered together. And from studying these clusters, many of these are quite old. Some of them go back to almost the beginning of the universe, as much as 12, 13 billion years old. So what we've done is we've taken, we've taken a look at these global clusters and picked some of the stars out of the cluster and drew them on the HR diagram. So what we did was we looked at the color, the temperature of the star, and then placed it on the HR diagram. And based upon doing that, we saw something very, very interesting. Now, what's unique about these global clusters is that pretty well all the stars in the global cluster formed at about the same time. So they all were born around, around the same time from the same huge cl cloud of dust and gas. And so when we took those stars and we placed them in the HR Dragon, we saw something as follows. We found that a great number of them were still situated on the HR diagram. And well, this is going to take a little while, but let me try to illustrate. So many, many of these stars were still clustered on the main, on the main sequence. And so what that meant was that they were still fusing hydrogen into helium in their cores. But what happened was there was a point where all of a sudden there were no stars past that point on the, on the main sequence, but the stars seemed to like veer off from the main sequence and end up something like this. There were a whole bunch of stars like that. And I guess I should actually move it over just a little bit more. Let me go a little bit more over here. All right, that would be a better position for them. Then we had maybe some stars over there. And then we had some stars that were located over here. Now, that's pretty well what we normally would see on an HR diagram, except on the regular HR diagram, when we looked at stars from all over, we'd also see a bunch of stars over here. Notice that they were completely devoid. And this point here is known as the turnoff point. Now what we also discovered was that very large stars that are on the main sequence, the big blue stars with very high temperatures, they would burn through their nuclear fuel very, very fast. The core of these stars would be so hot that the nuclear fusion process where the hydrogen was converted into helium would go so fast that they would only spend a fairly short amount of time as a main sequence star maybe as much as 50 or 100 million years, and then they would go through their red giant stage. So the stars over here were known as red giants. The stars down here in the left corner were known as white dwarfs. And so what we could do with the turnoff point is we could realize how long a star could survive on the main sequence as a main sequence star before it would turn itself into a red giant. And we would say that any stars that are up here, they would only last maybe about 50 million years. So maybe I'll write as 50 with an M. And stars over here, maybe 500 million years. And over here, 1 billion year. And here, 3 billion years. So what that means was, if the turnoff point was at a position where stars would no longer remain on the main sequence, they would then finish their main sequence stage after 3 billion years, that would tell us that the star cluster was about 3 billion years old because any stars that was older than 3 billion years old, um, well, no, I'll take that back. So any stars that are less than 3 billion years old would have already ch uh, changed from a main sequence star into a red giant. And any stars that are smaller than that critical mass they need to go to a red giant stage at this point in time, they would still need a few more billion years before they would turn into red giants. So this turnoff point was actually an indicator of how old the stars are in one of those clusters. And so by looking at this, we began to see that the, that the HR diagram, when you take all the stars from a global cluster and put them on an HR diagram, it would tell, actually tell you the life cycle of a star. You could see that stars would stay on the main sequence for a long time. And after so many years, depending upon how big they were, they would then turn themselves into red giants. And then you could see that they would kind of 
change, there would be a period in which they reach the red giant stage, then there would be a stage in which they would change, and then finally they would end up as white dwarfs. Now, white dwarfs are very small, very dense, very hot stars. Surface is very hot, but they're very tiny, they have very low luminosity, and that would then be the end stage of a star. So the HR diagram gave us a really good picture of the cycles of a star and how a star would change from one phase to another. And so what we're going to do in these videos is study the various stages through which the star will go in the life cycle to understand how stars are born, how they live, and how they die. And so that's what we're going to do over the next several videos.